Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, April 14th of 2018, Saturday, but this is, thank God, it's Friday because I never know what day it is. Now that I don't go to work every day, I never know what day it is. And now that I have an enlarged prostate, I wake up every two or three hours and I, when I wake up I don't know what time you know and then I sleep short naps and I wake up and I don't even know what time you know is it is it morning or is it night and I just you know so this is late uh oh, this is a mess cesarean situation I don't want to get into politics right away. Maybe I should save, but then maybe I should save this because a lot of you and about half of you positively will probably not like what I say. So let's just come back to this later and that way you can bail out before then. I finally uh, set up the, this is about me. You can go there and you can set it up for free or you can pay a small amount of money and you can have the extras that they uh, that they uh, provide so I finally went ahead and paid the extra and I've got that so the you know the URL for that is uh, Jim Howard dot blog B L O G probably really no reason for if you're coming here and watching my videos probably no reason to go there I don't know but anyway it's set up um, been uh, watching um, some stuff let's see Lost in Space, I watched, I think, about three episodes or four of that. That's on Netflix, if I remember correctly. The This is the new, you know, the new one. And I was a fan of the, <laughs> the I probably shouldn't say, you know, I was a fan of the old Lost in Space. Uh, this, of course, now is, you know, oh, fantastic graphics, fantastic you know, uniforms and aliens and everything. Much different than the uh, the old Lost in Space. Uh, but I guess there's something wrong with me now. I'm 77 years of age, and I, I really was looking forward. I saw the previews on Amazon, you know, the uh, previews of it. But, and I'm watching it, and I'll continue to watch it, but it just doesn't, and I don't like the new Dr. Smith. And so, Young Sheldon, I've been watching that because I signed up for CBS on, what's it called, online or whatever. I think I told you about that in a video before a little bit, uh, and I really enjoy that. I'm really enjoying Young Sheldon, and uh, I've watched, I think, is it 12 or 13 or 18 or whatever, so I've, I'm up to date, and so I can watch it live, or I can just wait for them to post it on uh, CBS uh, whatever it is, and watch it. So I'm really enjoying that. Uh, the Roseanne, I was a big fan of uh, Roseanne when it was originally on. And, of course, I think like everybody else, the more she controlled it or got her, to, you know, and especially like when they won the lottery, the ninth season or whatever that was. Oh my God, I couldn't stand to watch any of that. That, that I think they should have just. So now they've started Roseanne 
you know, the tenth season now. And I can't make it through the first, the first one. And it has nothing to do with what everybody's talking about, or not everybody, but the fact that Roseanne is a big-time supporter of uh, Donald Trump and that that enters into the show. And it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with, uh, it just, it's a, I think, a lousy show. The, I guess, their transgender grandson, that's totally unnecessary. Uh, Roseanne has something, I don't know, it with her other show. She wanted to make, uh, I don't know, her son in that one. He, she wanted to make him gay. She, she just, I don't know, there was, she just needed to do the show and stay out of the production end and the, have no ideas for writers or, you know, she should have just stayed out of that. But this, she's got her fingers into it and it just, uh, and uh, Dan, John Goodman, man, he's really aged and Roseanne looks remarkably good for, you know, for her age. And uh, John Goodman is really aged. And two for this first episode, maybe they corrected it in later episodes, but he keeps reading, you know, you can see him looking off and he's reading all of his lines. And it's just not, I can't stand it, unfortunately. Because I, I would love to have the, the enjoyment that I had of watching uh, the original Roseanne. Um, I was going to, this is supposed to be on Friday, but I, like I said, I totally forgot that what even day, what day it was. And then I was going to live stream this. And then again, I forgot that uh, the new, improved YouTube ability to live stream will uh, not let me use Firefox. I have Chrome on here, and I just forgot. So I set up my little things here that I could click on, and... Uh, It popped up at, you know, that browser. So instead of, I just not live streaming it. Um, weather has turned cold here in Fort Worth. We had some storms uh, last night, but they missed this part of West Fort Worth, and uh, we didn't really get anything. Um, I was uh, exchanging an email with somebody and we were talking about AM radio and uh, clear channel stations and uh, he's an amateur radio operator and I'm an amateur radio operator and we were both He's a little bit younger than I am, but we were both shortwave listeners and uh, talking a little bit about that. And then I remembered that uh, when Larry King was on the radio and had his radio show, this is before he became the TV Larry King, uh, I really enjoyed his show. And depending on when I, where I was working security, and every two hours we rotated, and sometimes I would end up in the patrol car, one of the patrol cars, and I could listen to him on the radio. Uh, not all, you know, not the entire, but I could listen on the radio to his show. When he had, uh, he was different than, he really did a great show. He was much different than his TV show. And uh, later, and he was, he let it be known that he was liberal in his politics then. And so I enjoyed that. He didn't, 
you know. But he was a good interviewer. I knew his subject, and uh, but uh, when he had on certain, you know, like if he had on a sports, somebody with sports or maybe uh, entertainment or something. Uh, a lot of times, I would just try to find something else to listen to, and some, I would end. I got where I was ending up at KOA in Denver, and sometimes I would hear Alan Berg, uh, who you know they took call ins, they took call ins, and that type of stuff, and they had a tremendous amount of hate. Uh, and going on there calling into the station and Allen Berg was a subject of it and he was Jewish and he didn't hesitate to take on you know KKK members and uh, right wing uh, zealots or whatever so that was heated I didn't exactly agree with the way that, you know he gave them their he let them talk a lot and then, you know, and, but still, I, it was something to listen to. And then sometimes it'd be somebody else, depending on, on my rotation. Uh, we rotated every two hours, like I said, to a different post. And you started, you wouldn't always start the same. It wouldn't always be the same, depending on the day you went in, you know. So you didn't, I didn't know, but. I uh, caught a lot of uh, Larry uh, Allenberg and the others, or whatever. So, this uh, one night, uh, Larry King was having uh, some type of a guest on that I really didn't care for. The inter- I don't know whether it was a sports figure or a entertainment figure or something like that. If it had been politics or something else, I would have stayed and listened. But it was somebody I didn't like those interviews that he did. And so I switched to KOA, and it was hysteria, chaos there or whatever, because uh, Larry Berg had just been uh, shot and killed. I think, if I remember correctly, on the show they didn't. I don't think they talked you know, about it. it was, well, they were crying and talking about it, but I mean, don't think they gave the details. You know, later I think it was, he was leaving his home, I believe, and he was gunned down in the, uh, there, but they were talking about it, and so I just happened to be there for a little bit of, a uh, little bit of history. So, wanted to mention that to you. Also, uh, for the first time, Man, it's really nice. Uh, Too bad I'm not younger, because man, things are in well, and in a way, things are are bad. Our politics, political situation is bad here in the United States. Uh, And other things are, you know, are really bad. But on the other hand, we've got you know the World Wide Web, which is cause of, you know some of the problems, or maybe all of them, I don't know. And, uh, but I wouldn't mind being younger because uh, cell phones, internet, high-speed internet, God, when I started, I had my first computer in 1978, had 4K of memory, I upgraded it to 48K of memory. The uh, modem I got for it was 300 baud. I don't know how many. I bought a couple other 300 baud modems, and then eventually, you know, I, get, I bought a 1200 baud, and then 2400, and then 64k, and I'm, you know. But now here we are, and uh, we don't have a car now since I'm retired. And I got some medical problems. Uh, So we sometimes, 
sometimes we order in food and it's always been pizza or Chinese. And of course I've been, you know, watching the thing with Uber and Lyft and uh, then they came with their different kinds of food delivery system services in other cities and maybe a Dallas, I think in Dallas, Fort Worth finally or whatever. And, um, but now there's uh, DoorDash, DoorDash.com. And so uh, Hillary and my daughter ordered for my birthday, I think it was, I think it was my birthday. She asked what we wanted and she had it delivered by DoorDash to our door here. And uh, we got the... Uh, by the, by the way, Spring Creek Barbecue is right down half a block from us. But uh, now whatever city here in the United States that you are in, um, what they have will look different depending on what you have in your, you know, what you're in your community. And now I cannot find who we use seem like they'd be at the top of the list. Um, here it is, Grandy's. So that's where we got uh, Hillary ordered his food in from there. And uh, actually she overdoes everything. She ordered from there and then she ordered from someplace else uh, because somebody else said they would like something else, you know. But anyway, we just, uh, on our own now, ordered yesterday chicken from them. And, of course, you know, side orders. And great, you know, the, the, their site works good. Immediately, you know, the map pops up, shows you where the food is going to be coming from, how long it, it you see the screen showing you where they're coming, you know, I'm just, everything worked great. Uh, kind of expensive, but a, about what I spend for uh, Chinese food, uh, more than I spend for, you know, for pizza. But I think we're going to be using, you know, I mean, not once a week or anything, but from time to time, I think we'll be using, it's pretty neat for somebody who, uh, doesn't have a vehicle or for somebody that's elderly and has medical problems or uh, whatever. So I just thought I'd mention it to you. I may put a link to, if you use the link, you get something, a certain amount off of your order free or something. I think your first order, is, the, the delivery is free. But uh, if you use the link, you get a certain amount off. I forget what it is. Uh, and then if you use my referral, when you spend altogether $50, well, when you spend $50 worth, you don't have to spend $50 worth on your one order, but when it amounts to fifty dollars, then I will get fifteen, I think, dollars worth of credit or something. So, I'll put the link below. Um, okay, I'm going to go. Yeah, because of politics, I'm going to be getting to that in a, in a minute. But uh, close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Okay. Okay. There we are. Every year when, uh, where is it? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. There it is. Every year when Walgreens has this, I always donate some money. Well, I donate some money every time they have some type of a drive. Uh... Wonder if I'll get into trouble. This is a thirty, surely not thirty six seconds.
there we go. So I'll put the link to the site and uh, oh, before we go to the politics, I uh, you may be seeing a little different uh, video, maybe. We'll see how it works out. There's some more parts in here. Ouch. Where this camera is over here, let me switch to that one. I'm going to set this cage up on the tripod. The camera that's there, the USB uh, camera, I will uh, mount up here or something on top. And then inside here, I'm going to put my Panasonic G7 camera in there. This will, like I said, be mounted on the tripod. And there's a app, Android app, that uh, I can use to control the the camera, do adjustments. Now, I don't have a zoom lens on this thing really. Well, I think it's it's very you know, but uh, gonna try that. And so one of the videos coming up as soon as I get everything squared away, away with this, we will give that a a little try and see how that how that works out. It's okay. If you're not interested in my politics, and half of you will not be, uh, those of you who are not interested in politics and really the way things are nowadays, I wish that I, uh, I wish I could just forget about politics altogether. Guess I ought to get away from the red nose thing. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Every day it gets crazier and crazier. Uh, where, where, for, it just sort of makes you just want to give up. I'd like to win the lottery. I moved to, I think I'd go to New Zealand. I have no nothing, I don't know anything about their politics down here. Might be, you know, I might go there and, oh my God, you know, let me get back. I don't know. <sighs> Donald Trump. Oh my God. Abraham Lincoln, a Republican, by the way, President of the United States, he didn't threaten the southern states the Confederacy, he didn't threaten them and say, I'm going to attack, you know, we're going to attack here and we just dare you to, you know, we'll show you, we've got, you know, we have new weapons and we have this or, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't do that. No sane person would, would do that, you know, would, uh, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt didn't, you know, say to the Japanese, okay, well, you attacked Pearl Harbor, but you don't know that we are going to attack, we're going to bomb Japan. Uh, and, of course, Japan would be thinking, there's no way they can bomb us. They're not, you know, don't have any forces in the, you know, we're going to bomb you and we have, you know, aircraft carrier, and we have, you know, Jimmy Doolittle, Doolittle is going to have fly, you know. You just don't tell the enemy anything. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt didn't do that when, when during World War II. Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, didn't do that type of thing. Uh... Johnson didn't do that type of thing with, during the, you know, or Truman didn't with the Korean War. 
Uh, President Johnson didn't do it with the Vietnam War. This Donald Trump tweeting over Twitter that he, that he is going to launch missile attacks against Syria and uh, Russia replying, you know, well, uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll shoot your missiles down or whatever. And then Trump saying on Twitter, you know, we've got new, you know, powerful, most powerful, you know, and, and you can't shoot them down. That type of stuff is literally insane. I mean, he not only is so unbelievably stupid, but that borders on, that's insanity to do that type of, have that type of exchange. He shouldn't be using Twitter at all. He shouldn't be using it. Yes, should the White House have a uh, presidential tweet, uh, you know, Twitter? Yeah, they should have a, somebody there that does it, but he shouldn't be, you know. And just everything that he does is so stupid and is a sign that he has, that he's mentally unstable. So uh, here we are. Uh, the danger is escalating. Uh, you just don't, you know, we are the world's number one superpower. We have more nuclear weapons than everybody else combined by, I don't know, tenfold or a hundredfold or whatever. But you just don't behave the way he's behaving. And I don't, there, there's no restraints on him. He doesn't listen to anybody. The only people, and they're not going to do it, you know, it's the Republicans in the House of Representatives. They should get together quietly, not not in public. They should get together, all of them. If They should put their love of country, their patriotism first, and their desire to be reelected, and their politics should be second. And, you know, they should get together, and they should just inform the president, you know, quietly that uh, don't tweet. Do not tweet. Delete your fucking tweet account. Delete it. Don't use it. Forget you ever, when you're out of office, fine, do what you, but don't tweet. And then, two, tell him some other things, you know, say, and uh, then, of course, he always escalates everything, and he, you know, he's going to prove that he's more powerful than them. And all he thinks, all Donald Trump thinks about is himself. And because every event, no matter what happens, a school shooting, uh, whatever it is, he's talking about him, you know, talking about himself, and has some type of meeting with all the military people around him, and he's talking about uh, the uh, his personal lawyer being, you know, having search. You know, of course, for for Donald Trump, it's you know the FBI smashed into his place, broke the door down, did you know they know they had a a court order issued by a federal judge, they had to show proof to the federal judge of, hey, this man appears to have committed crimes. Here's the information we have that, in our opinion, shows that he has committed crimes, and we need a warrant to search these different places and seize this, this stuff. But Trump is with his generals, and they're there for whatever reason, maybe for this, you know, before this launch here, and Trump spends the time 
talking about uh, fascist FBI and uh, people out to get him and how his personal lawyer is just a good man. He's a good man. And so, you know, what the Republicans, it's up to them, really. There's nothing else that, uh, that I see that can be done until the charges are brought against uh, from the special prosecutor, whatever charges are brought against President Trump, if charges are brought against, I think they will be because everybody around him is corrupt, is corrupt and everybody around him is stupid. Uh, and he said he was going to pick the best people, you know, oh God. Uh, so, you know, the House of Representatives, the Republicans, they have the, you know, they can do it. They just need to tell him, you know, okay. And Yes, the Constitution of the United States says that, you know, the president can be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. But the House can impeach for any, you know, they could say he uh, jaywalked, you know, they can, they could be, F, he didn't fucking, you know, no, he didn't commit high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, we just don't fucking don't like his orange hair. I mean, basically, that's what they can do. Uh, so, but anyway, they, of course, they have real reasons to, uh, and that's what they need to do is say, you know, stop this craziness. And whatever the major things they want or, or that need to be done, they can just say, stop it, you petulant child. Stop it right now or else. And then, of course, they have to be prepared to stick up to it. And if he doesn't stop it, just go ahead and impeach him. Then it goes to the Senate to decide whether he is innocent or guilty. And even though the Republicans have a majority in the Senate, uh, they would vote, you know, they would vote to remove him. Uh, because of his conduct and because of the fact that they're elected for more than two years, you know. So, uh, this is just so terrible. I just can't stand the news. But on the other hand, how can you not? So here... You know, Trump is going to exchange, uh, you know, who has with Putin, you know, who has the biggest hands or who has the biggest penis uh, pissing contest or something with nuclear weapons. You know, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? You know, hey, I'm more macho than you, you know. And uh, I think Putin, though, is... Uh, I don't think Putin is not like the uh, leader of North Korea. Uh, Putin will, I don't think we're going to go to nuclear war, but with Donald Trump, you have no idea what he can do with politics and with diplomacy. One little mistake saying something can cause unbelievable problems that you would not think that would happen just by, with the, um, when Saddam Hussein went into Kuwait, I don't think that it's actually true, but, or I, I think that maybe that was just his excuse but our I think our ambassador I think she, it was a female ambassador I believe she had a conversation with him and supposedly something was said like you know well 
from their from their side. You know, Kuwait, you know, has a lot of money, and uh, they were, I forget, you know, they were part of, uh, Iraq, and, or they should be, or something, and, and whatever, there was talk that maybe she wasn't well prepared, and I don't know whether this is true or not, that maybe she wasn't well prepared, or that she, when he said something, that she that she should have come back and said, you know, that's an independent country. If you were to, you know, try to go into the, you know, whatever, there would be repercussions or something. And I, I don't know how much of that is true. But that's an example of, you know, diplomats talking or whatever, and they're each side is trying to figure out, can we get by with going into, you know, like Germany? Okay, I think we can, you know, we can say that we should, that the, you know, Sudetenland is actually part of, they're all German there. And we can say that uh, part of uh, Czechoslovakia, that there are Germans there, and they're being, at, of course they weren't, you know, they're being attacked by the non-German, you know, Czechoslovakians. And we could go into, and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to figure out what they can get away with. And then it comes down to, you know, the Allies, not the U.S., but, you know, Britain and France or whatever, said, oh, okay, well, you know, yeah, you can go into Czechoslovakia although they weren't speaking for Czechoslovakia. They were, you know, yeah, you can go into Czechoslovakia, but that's the last thing you're going to do, right? Oh, yeah. And then Hitler uh, thinks, well, okay, I can think I can go into Poland because they've, you know. So this is rocket science in a way, you know. I mean, and we have somebody who's not competent, and he is the leader of the free world, and he was elected by the American people, and we are screwed. So, I don't know what the solution is. Let's just hope that somehow he can be, uh, well, it, he's uncontrollable people around him, you know. He's just not smart. And I think he has mental problems too. Uh, God, what are we going to, you know. We have to hope that from this that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party that they are going to not make this mistake again, and that they are going to make sure that their procedures are set up so that someone cannot get their party's nomination if they're out of, I don't want to say the mainframe, because sometimes you want somebody like, you know, Bobby Kennedy or somebody who's going to go the extra, you know, go the extra mile or make a change or whatever, but, you know, the Republican Party could have had a, a clause in there because they can do what a Democratic, the parties can do whatever they want to do. Uh, the Republican Party just should have, had, and the Democratic Party, of course, too, should have a clause in there that uh, everybody uh, who wants to run for, you know, try to get the nomination of the party will have to disclose their income tax returns. They must do it. Uh, Trump I would never do it under any, you know, you can see what's going on here. And uh, he does not want his private affairs gone into at all because apparently there's some, <laughs> there's some bad crap in there. And that would have kept that situation. But the parties need to, 
look again at that because they can change the the Democrats uh, for their one of their before one of their conventions made changes that uh, to make it more democratic, but it made it turned into you know the uh, Chicago convention where there was rioting in the streets and everything else. So you've got to be smart about how you structure the thing. You need to be fair. Uh, back in the old days, it was guys that looked like me, you know, Democrats that were old, fat, white men, although I don't smoke a cigar, but that's who, you know, picked the Democratic candidate. The Republicans were old, white, bald, fat men in suits, though, smoking cigars in their convention. We got away from that, which we should have. We got away to, you know, got away from that. But now we've come down to, for the Republicans, I don't know. They need, they, they just need to change their uh, Republican National Committee and they need to change their entire way that they pick people. So, anyway, that's my two cents. Echo, what's the temperature? Currently, in Fort Worth, it's 48 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Today, you can expect lots of sun with a high of 62 degrees and a low of 39 degrees. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry about the political thing. Just wanted to get it off my chest. My chest with big boobs. Oh, it's wonderful to get old. That's sarcasm, by the way. Unfortunately, nowadays you have to tell people that, you know. I mean, that you're trying to be funny. Thank you very much for watching.